Hi, you guys. So good to see you. Welcome to today's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. I have a repeat guest by design today. This podcast is airing on February 12th, so it's technically Valentine's week. Valentine's Day just two days away. Uh, don't you think we should be talking about love and being able to get love in this stage of our lives, how to successfully do it. You guys responded so well to my guest, Evan Mark Katz, who was on, I think a couple of months ago, and we were talking about finding love in midlife. And I wanted to bring him back because I specifically solicited questions from you all. And there's no better way than for him to be able to answer your questions right here to the point. I know that a lot of the questions you asked, many women are even thinking. So stay right here because Evan Mark Katz is coming. In the spirit of self-care, today's sponsor is One Skin. They are here to help you simplify your skincare regimen. Did you know they were founded by four PhDs who were dedicated to skin longevity? Did you also know that before this podcast, I actually put on One Skin Face and One Skin Eye underneath all the makeup that I'm wearing? The secret here, One Skin's proprietary OS1 peptide. One Skin is more than skincare. Again, it's about skin longevity, targeting the root causes of aging to help you look and feel your best at every age. Get started today with 15% off using code OVER50 at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code OVER50. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please, please support our show. Tell them we sent you. It is time to expect more from your skincare routine. Invest in the health of your skin with OneSkin. Let me introduce you to an air purifier that captured the attention of established media outlets like CNN, Money, ABC, and more. It's called Air Doctor. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants that your lungs don't need exposure to. This includes pollutants like allergens, pollen, pet dander, dust mite, mold spores, even bacteria and viruses that make you sick. Air Doctor comes with a 30-day breathe easy money back guarantee. So if you don't love it, you just send it back for a refund minus shipping. Head to airdoctorpro.com. Use promo code OVER50 to receive up to three hundred dollars off air purifiers exclusive to podcast customers you'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit which is an additional 84 dollar value look for the special offer by going to a-i-r-d-o-c-t-o-r-p-r-o Dot com and use promo code OVER50. Hey ladies, are you looking for a natural way to get some thickness and volume to your hair? You want to do it easily without taking a pill? Let me introduce you to Vegamore. Thanks to them, sticking to my hair routine has never been easier and I am finally seeing some results. Vegamore has really made a difference in my hair's life and I'm loving it. So elevate your hair wellness routine this year with Vegamore. For a limited time, get 20% off your first subscription order by going to vegamore.com slash over 50 and use code over 50 at checkout. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R.com slash over 50. Code over 50 to save 20% on your first order. Again, V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R.com slash over 50. Code over 50. Evan Mark Katz, you are back by popular demand. Hey, dude, my audience loved you, by the way, and they couldn't get enough. And it was it was interesting seeing their comments and, and seeing your perspective about dating in midlife. And I have to tell you, the whole dating app thing really tripped everybody up. You know that, right? Yeah, no, it's it's the uh, the bane of our existence and we can't live without it. Yeah, no, it's true. And I'm gonna tell you, I solicited audience questions prior to this interview, and we're gonna to get to those in the second half of our chit chat. But I wanted you back on because this podcast is airing on Valentine's week. And let me tell you, you know, there is so much pressure. And I think a lot of it is just brought on by the marketing, the merchandising, expectations. You know, it's, it's supposed to be rainbows and unicorns this week. And for a lot of people, it's just not. And I kind of want to talk about that because I think a lot of people can feel lost and alienated and a little bit lonely if they don't have in their lives what it is that they're looking for. Yeah, ho holidays have a way of bringing that out. It's, you know, Valentine's right. just comes on the heels of New Year's and Christmas and Thanksgiving where, 
you take stock of your life and you ask yourself, am I happy? Is this where I want to be? Is this all there is? Valentine's Day is just particularly per pernicious because it's pure ha Hallmark holiday and mm -hmm. it's all about romance. And so the way I look at how, as a coach for women, right? Single women, all my clients are single women. I'm not a couples counselor. I look at it like a holiday that is an optional holiday. If like me, your father passed away 25 years ago, Father's Day doesn't have the same meaning that it used to. And so you don't do much around Father's Day if you don't have a dad. Mm -hmm. That's the way I would look at Valentine's Day. If there's some someone in your life that's that's celebrating this with you, then lovely. Otherwise, it doesn't even exist. That's interesting. And, you know, I, I like that you phrased it that way. And I kind of did a spin on it in a YouTube video that came out about 14 ways to offer yourself self-love on Valentine's Day, because you can be your own Valentine, can you not? Yeah, I mean, listen, no one wants to step into a life that you find miserable. So mm -hmm. all, and there's so much information, especially for women, about self-care and ways to nurture yourself. I mean, there's there's only so many ways you could put a spin on it. I think it's amazing that you came up with 14 ways. And That's so- That's what I do, Evan. <laughs> it is, it's, 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 it's your, your superpower. So, so yes, celebrate who you are, surround yourself by loved ones, do things that bring you joy and meaning, um, and block out the noise of all the marketers and the, and the people telling you that you should be somewhere. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. If somewhere deep in your heart, you're not content with the status quo, know that you can change the arc of your life. You do not have to say, just because my romantic history is tortured, it has to continue to be that way for the next 30 years. Right, right. I mean, okay, so here we are, you know, we're mid-February and a lot of people started off the new year with their intentions, their resolutions. You know, I'm going to do dry January. I'm going to do love February. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Right. But I, I think a lot of people are trying to hit the reset button at the beginning of the year. And for many women, that could mean, you know, I'm going to enter or maybe re-enter the whole dating pool and what that looks like. And, you know, I think that, you know, a lot of women just don't know where to start. Right. I think, I think you actually nailed it. So the psychology of my clients, and remember, I'm, I'm, right, I'm not like mansplaining the world. I'm, I just listen to women tell me their feelings and their frustrations and their fears and try to help them navigate something that's inherently tricky. So the biggest problem that women have at a certain point is they don't believe that anything good can happen, or if it does happen, the other shoe's going to drop, mm -hmm. right? There's, there's always something historically that undermines it. If you're single in your fifties and sixties, it's because nothing's ever worked. So why would you believe that the next time is going to be any different than the last time, different than the last time, than the last time, right? So it's that lack of belief that we have to attack more than anything. And so part of my work, right? I, you know, I had a course called Love You is helping women rebuild their confidence in themselves, mm -hmm. in men, in possibility, because you know, and I know intellectually that there are millions and millions of happy couples out there. Even if you're not part of it right now, it's not something that is reserved for other people. It's something that can be yours. And if you find yourself overwhelmed because nothing's ever worked and you need someone holding your hand, that's the very nature of, of, of what I do. And I'll do as much of it as, as I can here with your audience. Um, but it starts with confidence. It's not which site has the best men. That's where people's minds go to. Where do I find the good ones and avoid the bad ones? And the truth is 10% of guys are the kind of guys that you want to be with. And they're just mixed in with the bad ones and they're all on the dating apps. And so that's where it becomes a skill in sorting and sifting and attracting good guys. Right. You know, Dr. Phil, as you know, I'm, I'm now at his network about ready to yeah. launch a, a news program. But, you know, Dr. Phil's one of his greatest expressions is how's that working for you? So I think a lot of women may be approaching this and questioning, OK, you know, it hasn't worked for me in the past. Maybe I should be asking myself, how's that working for me? And suddenly take a different approach. How do you how do you get women to kind of open up and reframe what it is that they've done and, and how they've approached dating and finding love. Yeah. I mean, you've heard the phrase, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Um, that's usually where we land and, and it doesn't take 
a therapist that doesn't take a dating coach to point out your definition of insanity. If you have put 60 hours a week into work and travel, well, you probably haven't given much oxygen to putting love first. The act of finding a partner, not just keeping a partner, finding a partner, right? So you need to be able to carve out five, five hours a week to talk to guys online, right? If you think you can go online for like a month and exit with a husband, like you're ordering a book from Amazon, well, it takes a little more trial and error than that. There are right? returns just, there. <laughs> just because the cover looks good doesn't mean you're going to enjoy the book. Right. So if you've always gravitated towards emotionally unavailable men because your father was that kind of guy and you, 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 you know, unconsciously, you know, want to repair that relationship again, you don't need therapy to recognize, okay, I need to rewire myself to value guys who value me and treat yeah. me with kindness and consistency. So, and if you're lonely and you don't admit it to the world, because I'm a smart, strong, successful woman. I have everything. I have my career and I have my dog and I got my besties and look at us on the beach on our girls retreat. And you're still kind of lonely at the end of the day and you're keeping really, really busy to avoid feeling those feelings. That's something to look at. So wherever you are, there's some pattern that you have that is perpetuating the problem. And once we've identified that, now it's finding a way to the other side of it. So all I have to do is hold up the mirror. You tell me why you don't want your life to look like this for the next 30 years. Yeah. You know, sometimes we can talk ourselves into a relationship. We can justify things. But how do we know truly when something is just not a right fit for us? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, and I'm really glad you asked it in that way. People tend to think of relationships as what happens in the first three months of the relationship. If I fall in love with him and we have a special connection, then I have to double down on that no matter how miserable he makes me. Hmm. Right? We made a decision. We're sticking with the decision no matter what the evidence shows. And I talk to women who have 25, 30 year marriages and I say, when did you know something was wrong? Six months in. And they just stayed out of fear or inertia or the idea that, you know, you, you know, commitment, relationships are hard. All these stories we tell ourselves. Relationships are like jobs, right? They, they are replaceable. You could always find another one. And if the one you have isn't making you happy, I certainly wouldn't want to spend 10 hours a day there. So mm -hmm. good relationships, the way you know it, if it's working, and forgive me if I repeated it from the last time I was on your show, they are marked by a lack of anxiety. Yeah. Right. If you're constantly on eggshells, don't know if you could speak your mind, if this is going to be the thing that causes him to get angry, to reject you, to start a fight, and you can't be fully self-expressed within your relationship and you feel trapped within your relationship, what good is your relationship serving you? So a big part of finding the guy who's right for you is being able to eliminate all those guys who are wrong for you. And that's why my central metaphor in Love You is that women are the CEOs and men are the interns applying for a job. The intern might have had a great resume and a good interview, but if three months in, the intern's only showing up once a week, he doesn't get to keep his job. Mm. Oh, I like that. That's a really, really good analogy. You know, and that leads into something else we didn't talk about last time that I really want to talk about this time. And that is the notion of the falling in love cloud, right? There's that honeymoon phase. We're in love, we're in lust, and, you know, the we're in a cloud of chemistry, but it is not sustainable. It's not meant to last forever. And I think that, and I'm not, I'm not gonna speak for every woman, but, but I know that some women, you know, get so intoxicated by that love cloud that when it dissipates as it naturally will and should, and you settle into a deeper and more meaningful love, but it's not so full of chemistry, that you begin to question the nature of the relationship. Why am I not in the love cloud anymore? What, why, you know, why am I not feeling that? But isn't that normal? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole interesting body of literature on this. Uh, I don't want to bore everybody, but I, I could go on and on about it. The, the term for that excitement you're talking about, uh, New York Times just wrote about it last week. It's called limerence, huh. right? Um, and the other term that, that you, uh, you sort of stumbled in here, into here is called hedonic adaption. Hedonic adaption is 
I got a new car. I love that leather smell. I'm so excited by it. I look at it in the driveway. I can't wait to drive it. And then like three years from now, it's just your car and it gets you from point A to point B. Yep. And that's everything, your new car, your new job, and yes, your new relationship. Chemistry, the term we use chemistry is describing brain chemistry, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, pheromones. Those brain chemicals light up the pleasure centers of your brain like cocaine or methamphetamine, high highs, low lows, and then 18 to 36 months into your relationship, they fade, which is why no one, no one has been married for 10 years and wakes up in the morning excited to hear what their spouse has to say. Mm. Right? Okay, and so to expect, expect it to be otherwise is expecting yep. to essentially not be human. Yes, so, you're setting yourself up for failure if you expect anything else. And I want to talk about that, that expectation on the back end of this break. We're going, to, we're going to take a quick one and thank our sponsors. But you're so smart, and I, I'm so grateful you're here. And there's so much more to talk about, including viewer questions. We're getting to those in just a bit on the backside here of this break on Over 50 and Flourishing. In the spirit of self-care, today's sponsor is OneSkin. They are here to help you simplify your skincare regimen. Did you know they were founded by four PhDs who were dedicated to skin longevity? Did you also know that before this podcast, I actually put on One Skin Face and One Skin Eye underneath all the makeup that I'm wearing? The secret here, One Skin's proprietary OS1 peptide. It is the first ingredient scientifically proven to reduce the buildup of senescent cells. You're like senescent what? Yeah, those are the notorious zombie cells that contribute to skin aging. Let me tell you, for a limited time, our listeners get an exclusive 15% off their first One Skin purchase using the code OVER50 when you check out at oneskin.co. Invest in the health and longevity of your skin with One Skin. I love the fact that it's just one bottle for the face, one bottle for the eye. I'm not having to do 15 layers and wondering what goes where first. Super simple, super easy, and results driven. One Skin is more than skincare. Again, it's about skin longevity, targeting the root causes of aging to help you look and feel your best at every age. Get started today with 15% off using code OVER50 at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code OVER50. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please, please support our show. Tell them we sent you. It is time to expect more from your skincare routine. Invest in the health of your skin with one skin. Did you know Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths a day? The indoor air that we breathe is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, up to 100 times more polluted, according to the EPA. And did you also know that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally? So what's the solution? Well, let me introduce you to an air purifier that captured the attention of established media outlets like CNN, Money, ABC, and more. It's called Air Doctor. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants that your lungs don't need exposure to. This includes pollutants like allergens, pollen, pet dander, dust mite, mold spores, even bacteria and viruses that make you sick. Air Doctor comes with a 30-day breathe easy money back guarantee. So if you don't love it, you just send it back for a refund minus shipping. Head to airdoctorpro.com, use promo code OVER50 to receive up to three hundred dollars off air purifiers exclusive to podcast customers you'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit which is an additional 84 dollar value look for the special offer by going to a-i-r-d-o-c-t-o-r-p-r-o.com and use promo code over 50 We are back with Evan Mark Katz from Love You. He is a relationship coach specifically for women in midlife, which I, I really appreciate, Evan, that you are you are targeting my women and a lot of us find ourselves in unique um, positions and situations in midlife of having to start over in our love lives. But yet, hopefully, with the wisdom and the perspective of what we've learned in our previous relationships and experiences. And so before we got into the commercial break, we were talking about just sort of the cycle of love and finding love and falling in love and, and that nature of 
Um, and, and you threw out some big fancy words um, at me and my audience, which I'm sure you'll use again. But but once the cooling down has taken place from the falling in love is, is sort of that settling in. And that's kind of where the trouble happens in relationships, because we think I'm not feeling the chemistry anymore. So something must be wrong. But in fact, it's not. I mean, that's that's where the work comes in. Yeah. And, and again, I really want to shy away, even though it's it's probably the right word, shy away from the word work. Yeah. Right. Because I think relationships require effort. Yes. If it feels like work, no one wants to be incentivized to do that. That's like a labor camp. Right. Watering the garden takes effort. You got to put right. water on it or it doesn't flourish. That's what relationships are. Mm -hmm. It's the commitment to the commitment to love someone unconditionally, to prioritize their needs, to validate their feelings, to go above and beyond to figure out how you can make their day just a little bit brighter. So that is just the effort of being a good partner. And you could be the world's greatest partner as a woman, but if you choose a bad one, it doesn't matter how great you are. Mm -hmm. And that's usually the big thing that I discover with my clients. They're really amazing women who put their heart and soul into trying to change men to be the man they want them to be instead of really paying attention to who they are. What about, you know, in the dating process, if you don't feel all the feels, as the younger generation says, is that a sign that you shouldn't pursue it? Well, I guess then we get into the question of uh, how many feels does one need to uh, <laughs> necessitate a second date? Right. And, right. and, and so I, because it's such a common question, I made up a, a metric. It's in, it's in week eight of my Love You course on first dates because mm -hmm. everybody's like, do I give them a second date? How do I know? Like, how do I even know anything? Yeah. So I made up something that's largely arbitrary, but I'll give to you guys right now for free because I think it's use, a useful construct, a lens to look through second dates. Mm -hmm. So we've just established here, chemistry is ne necessary for a relationship. You can't have a good relationship if you don't feel anything or if you don't have a good sex life. But chemistry in and of itself is not going to sustain you for the next 40 years. Right. Those are both true. All right. So how much chemistry is enough? I usually tell women, First dates, you want to pay attention to three factors that describe your feelings. Number one, comfort on a first date. Can I be myself? Can I relax? Can I let down my guard? Because if you're nervous on the entire date, it's not a very good date. Mm -hmm. Number two, fun. Did I have fun? If you don't have fun, I don't see the point of going out with him. Even if he's cute, even if he's rich, fun matters. And the last piece, which was your original question, is attraction. Attraction on a positive scale, a six out of 10 is sufficient to explore a second date because a six could go to a nine if he's an amazing kisser, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's ha true. Happens, happens all the time. A good percentage of my married clients started at six, went to nine. Hmm. But I would never tell a woman who feels nothing to go out with a guy a second time. It's not fair to him. It's not fair to you. Cut him loose and wish him well. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, what are... What are some warning signs where we shouldn't pursue that second date? I mean, real red flags. Well, I, I think that there, you used a key word again, the same way I don't like the word work. I don't like the word pursue. I think as a woman, you're uniquely powerful and you don't have to pursue men at all. Mm. Right? I had a client tell me, uh, you are the egg, he is the sperm. Let him pursue you. <laughs> See, I'm used to right. being a boss lady. I can't help myself. Right. But the truth is, if you value yourself, I'm telling you, Mark Zuckerberg is not running down the street chasing down interns in the parking lot to take a job at Meta. He does not have to pursue. Yeah, You're valuable enough that you don't have to pursue relationships. What you could do is sit back and see how men pursue you. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. If you have a guy that you like and he's not making a sustained effort, he texts you occasionally. He sees you on Friday night, but he doesn't follow up. There's no momentum that's leading you to believe this is going to materialize. Mm -hmm. Really bad sign. So that is number one, two, and three. Don't pursue men. Allow them to pursue you and judge men for how they make you feel and their sustained efforts. Other big red flags that people tend to gloss over at the very beginning are things that are high-risk situations. And we want to avoid high risk the same way you'd want to avoid uh, risking your money in a penny stock when you're saving for retirement. So what's a high risk situation? Guy who's separated, guy who's recently divorced, guy who says, I don't really know what I'm looking for. 
guy who says, I think you're too good for me. Guy who says, <laughs> guy who's currently dealing with alcoholism, big midlife crisis, mm -hmm. huge financial difficulty, unemployment. They might be really nice guys with potential, but right now today, they're a walking red flag. And they're telling you up front, stay away from me. This is probably not gonna have a happy ending. But if you're lonely and he's cute and he makes an effort, you're like, all right, what the hell? And then you wake up two years from now with a slacker pothead husband <laughs> wondering, <laughs> how did I get here? <laughs> what happened? Right, so, so really paying, oh, also big, big thing for me, no long distance relationships. Yeah. Right. Very, I very mean, popular, very, very high risk with a, a, a high failure rate. So I try to stay in this really narrow lane. Is he emotionally, uh, is he emotionally available? Is he making an effort for me? Is he gainfully employed, relatively happy and looking for a long-term relationship that shares the same values with you? Mm -hmm. If yes, keep going. If not, well, guess what? 90% of guys have some fatal flaw. Avoid them at the beginning instead of banking on them to change. Yeah. You know, and I, and I want to mention this too, because you're like, okay, wait a second. Don't be, don't be the CEO. Don't be the pursuer. So, so let them pursue. But like you're saying, at some point you've got to be the CEO because look, there's a dopamine rush in being pursued. It feels good to be wanted for somebody to want to try to be with you. But then you have to have your eyes wide open to all of those things that you just mentioned. And if you see a warning sign to then be able to shut it down and make that decision in your best behalf of saying, look, I'm seeing things here that aren't right, that aren't going to work for me. And even though you're pursuing me, and even though that feels good, you know, end a party right now because you're not going to be good for the long run. And that's not easy for a lot of women to do. It, it's, it's not easy at all. It's, it's why I, I Candidly, it's why I have a job. It's, it's because I'm less emotionally involved and I could be more objective about it. So I'll have women come to me and they'll overreact to something that's not a red flag, right? Oh, this guy tried to kiss me at the end of the day. And I was like, well, yeah, that's kind of normal. Well, I don't like that. Okay, but that's not inherently a red flag, for example. So she, someone's gonna try to run from that because she's gotten her signals crossed in the past. And then she'll let a guy completely skate Right. Oh, he's been he's been single for two months, right? After a twenty year marriage, you don't want to be his rebound. Mm -hmm. But he's so nice, and he's emotionally available, and he said his marriage marriage has been dying for years, and he's doing all the right things, and he's talking about a future. And, and I said, yeah, the guy who's still married, the last thing he wants to do is get remarried, <laughs> like in two years when you're ready for it. So yeah. he, someone has to be the first person he dates. It shouldn't be you. Um, most recently I had a client who took love you who at the end of the course got a boyfriend and she says, he's so great. And I listen to you and he makes me feel safe and he's got, he's got great communication skills and he's saying all the right things. There's only one problem. He steals things. He like he comes things? home. He, yeah. He's like, I got a five fit finger discount from Ho home Depot today. You know, I, I, I took three and they, I, I only, I only put in for two and, and I was like, what? yeah, that. Seriously, this guy did everything right, apart from the fact that he's got a little theft problem. <laughs> if that's not a big character issue, I don't know what is. I don't so know what is. All, ex all excited about her new boyfriend. And I was like, yeah, you're going to have to break up with him. Because if the guy who volunteers that he steals things, if you discovered he was cheating on you in a few years, would you be remotely surprised by that? No. So no, we got to cut those stealing things. from you financially. We got to cut that stuff off now before you fall deeply in love with him. Wow. And that's, that's the kind of thing that happens all the time. We get caught up in the, the maelstrom of emotions and we, 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 we put ourselves in bad positions because we are too emotionally engaged. Yeah. And so having a third party to be your conscience, to be that angel on your shoulder is, is quite useful for people who don't trust their own judgment with men. Yeah, that's, that's a valid point. You mentioned communication earlier. How much is too much in the beginning? I mean, you know, sometimes it can be verbal diarrhea. It's like first date, you've learned about somebody's entire dating history and their grandmother and how they made chicken soup. I mean, do you know what I'm saying? There's a certain pacing to communication. And I feel like sometimes it's an interview on the first date. So how much is too much? You're saying a couple different things, which, which are all are, are individually interesting. So number one, let's go backwards. You started with the interview. 
Yeah. Interviewing someone on a first date doesn't make for a good first date. And candidly, women I'm a do it. Journalist more. Evan. <laughs> women do it more than men because there's so much fear. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to waste time. All right. So, who did you vote for in the last election? Do you have money in a 401k? Tell me about your relationship with your ex. Are you close with your kids? She's trying to figure out what this guy's deal is. Yeah. Is he my soulmate? Because if he's not my soulmate, I don't want to invest too much time in him. And she's interviewing him and he's like, why? Why the third degree? So men do the same thing. Dating coach, you would tell men, hey, don't interview her for mm -hmm. the part of your wife. It's not good dating technique. <laughs> That's different than what kind of stuff can you talk about on a first date? Right. And I have a sort of dating maximalist point of view. And it's belied by science as well. The more intimate you can be in your conversation, the better chance you have of having a connection. There was a very famous New York Times article called 36 questions you should ask on a first date to have him fall in love with you. If, if you recall, it was a very widely shared article, mm -hmm. right? And it was just, it wasn't to literally come in with a set of questions. It was understanding that talking about hopes and dreams and fears and love and friendship and family and relationships is a much more powerful bonding mechanism than talking about what you're streaming or what you're eating. Mm -hmm. And so keeping it light, which a lot of people want to keep it light, doesn't make for an amazing connection on a first date. True. You know, I've always believed that a man's relationship with his mother can often dictate how he's going to treat a woman. What kind of stock do you put in that? I think that as a heuristic, a shortcut, it's largely a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's flawed in way too many ways mm -hmm. to be accurate. I don't know what you'd compare that to uh, Myers-Briggs test or birth order or a uh, zodiac sign or something like that. Like <laughs> you could probably find a way to get there, yeah. but I wouldn't be like, oh, this guy's got a bad relationship with his mother. He's dead to me. Because I know there's enough women I've worked with over the years who are lovely women who have pretty fractured relationships with their fathers, and I sure. wouldn't want to eliminate them. Right, right, right. But sometimes there's, as you know, there's healing work that women and men tend to do in relationships because of what they lacked from a parental relationship. Correct. So, you know, and I've seen some of that in my, in my personal life and have learned the hard way personally that a man's not going to be my dad. And I most certainly can't ask him to make up for a hole that was there as a child. But I just personally have noticed that men who have stronger relationships with their moms and granted that can swing too far the other way too. It right, can be the mama's boy. Yes. So hyper-connected that it's kind of weird in and of itself. And, and yeah. it's like, whoa, am I battling mom for his attention? I mean, it's just an interesting dynamic for me. I, I, I agree with you in general. I would use it just as another data point. Mm -hmm. But what we don't want to do is, because it's part of the interviewing process, reverse engineer it. Tell me your birth order. Tell me your zodiac sign. Tell me your Myers-Briggs. Tell me about your relationship. Because now we're just trying to build like a case against him instead of just experiencing him. How does he yeah. show up? How does he make you feel? Right. And so my approach to dating is a little bit less wary and a little less fear-based of making those bad decisions because you can't make a bad decision on my watch. You can listen to your own judgment and judge him for how he treats you rather than his resume. Right. Because well, most people who are single have pretty checkered resumes. Yeah, sure. And and that's to be expected. I mean, we, we all know that we're coming to the equation and everybody's coming to the equation with that checkered resume. But that's where you bring life experience to the equation. And hopefully if you've learned throughout, then you come to the, the date and the situation richer and more well-rounded than where you were previously. So I right. guess that's learning from our past. I'm, I'm assuming, Dominique, yes. you are, you've never been, and I don't want to speak for you, you've probably never been more self-aware, more on your game, more dateable, more ready for love. I, if and when you choose to put yourself back into that pool, I think the 56-year-old version of you will be better than the 51-year-old version of you mm -hmm. and the 40-year-old version of you, et cetera. Is that right? Uh, I would say an amen to that. Absolutely. Right. I've, I have learned and I have, I have sought the wisdom from the process instead of just trying to remove the pain from the process. So yes, I would agree with that. And I thank you for that assessment, by the way. Sure. Well said. Um, curious. 
So what are, because you mentioned that New York Times article, what are some great questions to ask on that first date to really get inside? You know, what, what are the winners? It's like every journalist wants to ask the right questions to the right guest. But you're literally going against the last thing I said, which is I don't think you should come with these kind of questions. You don't want to be prepared for a date because when you're prepared for a date, you have an agenda. And when yeah. you have an agenda, people don't like agendas. Guys have an agenda on a first date. It's trying to get laid. When you have a guy who's trying to get laid on a first date, how does it Well, then feel? you should have an agenda too. <laughs> no, actually, the magic is, I won't do this. I have a whole 15-minute bit I do on this okay. about, I'd love to do it as a TED Talk, but the key to dating is putting aside your agenda. The guy who wants to get laid, yeah. put that aside. Oh, well, Dominique, with that. Dominique doesn't want that. What she wants is a guy with a plan. He calls her in advance. He makes a connection with her. He makes dinner reservations. He keeps in touch during the week so she knows he's thinking of her. Mm -hmm. It builds up excitement and trust and rapport and yes. anticipation. He either meets her at the restaurant or picks her up on time. Shoes match the belt close to her home so she's not outside her comfort zone. Right. He's polite to the waiter and the maitre d. He asks you questions about yourself. He listens to your answers. He doesn't hijack the conversation to complain about Match.com or his mm -hmm. awful ex-wife or how much he hates his job or conspiracy theories. He is present with you. He's demonstrating that he's a high character man who's mm -hmm. looking for love, right? Picks up the check at the end of the night, knows of another bar to go to right after the, we mm -hmm. close down this joint. We know of another place we could walk to, right? Bar closes at one in the morning, picks up the check, walks you to your car, drives you home, kisses you goodnight, says, I had an amazing time, Dominique. When can I see you again? calls you the next day to make that plan. Mm -hmm. That is a man who put aside his agenda and focused on your agenda. Okay. So then instead of using the word agenda, we'll use the word plan because I really like how all of that played out. And if that's not an agenda, then that's a really good plan. <laughs> that is a woman's ideal first date. It is. I listen to women for a living. It's a woman's ideal first date. A guy's ideal first date could be a hamburger and a blowjob. You understand? <laughs> like, how, how, could, how could I spend the least money, the least effort? The maximum results. <laughs> could you come over with a quarter pounder and a bottle of wine? That would be great. So understand the date that I just understand gave you. understand why I use the word agenda here. The date that I gave you is your ideal date. If a guy gives you your ideal first date, he's going to get a second date and he's going to have a chance of getting some action one day. Right. But he can't push his agenda too quickly on the first date because you've seen the guys who do that and it makes you put your guard up. So for a woman to be a good first date, you have to help the man get his agenda met. Huh. So What's his agenda? <laughs> right. So the insecure guy's agenda is to impress you enough to get a second date. The confident guy's agenda is to get some action. Right. Your job is not to ask him probing questions that are going to determine whether he's your soulmate. Mm -hmm. Your job is to let him know he's impressing you and letting him know that one day he's got a chance of getting some action. And, if you, can some do those, and if you could do those two things, Dominique, yeah. every single guy is going to come back for a second date huh. because it wasn't an interrogation. Right. It was making him feel like he's doing a good job, mm -hmm. that he's funny and interesting and attractive and he's on the right track. Positive reinforcement. And, right. Men are, like, men are like dogs, right? There was a, another very famous New York Times article about, uh, it was written by Amy Sutherland about how she trained her husband like she trained a seal at SeaWorld. And it was one of the most viral articles ever because negative reinforcement doesn't work on men. Nagging men, complaining about them, right? If she wanted her husband to do something, she would incentivize him. If he was in her space while she was cooking dinner and he, she was getting annoyed with him, she'd put potato chips at the other side of the room so he could be over there. If the, dishes were piling, if the dishes were piling up and she was getting really frustrated, instead of yelling at him, she would just let them pile up until they overflowed. And then one day he realized, oh, honey, I realized I should do the dishes. I took care of that for you. Oh my God, sweetheart, you're such an amazing husband. Mwah. Wow. Right? Positive reinforcement goes so much 
further the negative reinforcement, but our first tool is always to criticize. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's such a good nugget, Evan. So good. Okay. Enough enough with me asking you. I told you I've got a ton of viewer questions coming your way next, right after this commercial break. Thank you, my friend. Hey ladies, are you looking for a natural way to get some thickness and volume to your hair? You wanna do it easily without taking a pill? Let me introduce you to Vegamore. Thanks to them, sticking to my hair routine has never been easier and I am finally seeing some results. I definitely noticed some thinning last year and I started to introduce Vegamore into my routine. Super easy, just a little bottle of a hair serum and you put it on once a day. You could do it before you style when your hair is wet, you can do it at nighttime, when you go to bed. Uh, you can get it one bottle at a time. I like their subscription service so I can get three bottles sent. So when I l run low on it, I don't have to worry. Vegamore has really made a difference in my hair's life and I'm loving it. So elevate your hair wellness routine this year with Vegamore. For a limited time, get 20% off your first subscription order by going to vegamore.com slash over 50 and use code over 50 at checkout. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R.com slash over 50. Code over 50 to save 20% on your first order. Again, V E G A M O U R dot com slash over 50. Code over 50. Hey, everybody. Did you know about Bond Charge? It's a holistic wellness brand, and they've got a huge range of products. You may be familiar with those red light face masks. I know you've seen a lot of content creators use them and talk about them. They've gained popularity because they treat a wide range of symptoms, things like wrinkles and fine lines eczema, even migraines, acne, scar tissue, there's wound healing, relaxation, even razor burns and ingrown facial hair. That's a lot. Red light therapy has been reviewed in more than 4,000 peer-reviewed studies with 400 plus being double-blind placebo trials. Not only do these studies show amazing health benefits, but nobody has any negative side effects. I particularly like the red light face mask naturally for fine lines and wrinkles because yeah, I am 56. So that's why I use it. Just 10 to 20 minutes each day, nice and easy to use. You can do it while you're watching your favorite television show, whatever. It's lightweight. It doesn't get hot. Again, Bond Charge, B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E. Here, get this. Go to bondcharge.com slash over 50. Use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. My guest today is Evan Mark Katz. He is a dating coach for women in midlife. He's got a course called Love You. He has helped thousands of women find love. I mean, real love, the real deal. Finally, at this stage of life, the first interview that we had, Evan, you talked um, a lot about dating apps and needing apps in order to find it. And you even gave an example about a ratio. It's a numbers game that, you know, if you can find a certain amount of men on your own through friends, through, you know, a bar, through church, whatever, then great. But most people can't get those numbers. So as you can imagine, a lot of questions that came in from the viewers are really centered around apps. So let me read those to you. Dating apps, yes or no? Uh, what's the best app to use? There are so many. Online dating, is it really dating with uh, fake profiles, fake descriptions, what's real? Do you recommend online dating as a way to meet? You know, on and on and on. So let's kind of circle that wagon again about online dating and why you encourage so many women to go there. Sure. Um, asking about the best dating app is the most common question I get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the problem is there's not a good answer for it. Yeah. It's like saying, what's the best gym, All right? Where, do, where am I going to lose the most weight? Mm -hmm. And the answer is you could lose weight at any gym because it's how you show up at the gym. It's how hard you work at the gym. If you're reading a, a, a magazine on the treadmill for 10 minutes, you're not going to get much of an effect. So that's, the sites, don't wait for the site to hand you the perfect man. There is no best site. Any site that's a big brand name and has a high volume of people in your area is probably just fine. My clients are partial to Hinge uh, and Bumble as dating apps. Uh, I am partial to Match.com and OkCupid because they have more written content. And I am a big believer in courtship and conversation. Yep. Um, but ultimately, 
most people bounce from site to site to site looking for the best site. So everybody ends up anywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as why online dating, all my clients who've ever been resistant to online dating, I will tell them the same thing. I have no stake in the online dating industry. It is, I am not concerned about that at all. If you can get yourself a date a week without online dating, then by all means, you never have to go online. Nobody's ever taken me up on that offer because it is hard to meet people in real life. Whether that should be that way is a different story, but it is. If you're a woman who lives in the suburbs, if you are, most of your friends are married, if you're of a certain age, if you work in a small office with other women, if you work remotely, there aren't many opportunities for real life interactions. So we should cherish those. And there's a skill in flirting and meeting men, mm -hmm. but we need to supplement it the same way that if you lost your job, you wouldn't say, I'm going to not go on the internet. I'm going to avoid LinkedIn mm -hmm. because computers, you know, this is a tool. It's a flawed tool. It's a highly flawed tool, right. but our job is to figure out how to make the best of it instead of just avoiding it. Uh, that's that's such a great analogy. You're absolutely right. And by the way, when you do get on these apps, you can also rely on friends, social groups, community. Just because you're on one doesn't mean it eliminates the potential of the other, right? Correct. Um, it's it's a part of a comprehensive plan. Yes, exactly. All encompassing. Um, I thought this was so interesting. Is 70 too old for a relationship? Uh, I sure hope not. Uh, I'm too. planning on being married at 70. I've got at least seven clients right now in their 70s. Mm -hmm. So I have success stories and wedding photos of people in their 70s on my website. Mm. So I can imagine how the answer to that question could be, be yes. If you set that as a limiting belief, mm -hmm. right, which is what's animating the question, is your belief somehow that 70 is too old for a relationship, then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. My mom found love for the third time uh, at age 69. She got remarried. She's now 77. She's never been happier with her first two husbands than she is right now. Yep. So I, I think ultimately life is what you make of it. Uh, if you want to avoid relationships and you're content being alone, that's a perfectly valid life choice. But if you do not want to be alone for the rest of your life, there's absolutely something that's within your power and a good relationship is available because there's a man just like you out there who's wondering, how he could find you. Yeah. And Evan, as I shared with you the last time we spoke, my mom, God rest her soul, at age 82, was on Mash.com and met the last gentleman uh, whom she was with and, you know, decided age is not a factor in, in pursuing love. And so I hope, I, I just encourage more women to have that, that free kind of spirit and an unapologetic sense that there are no boundaries and limitations, except for the ones that we put on ourselves, right? Love is, love is infinite. Yes. You, you could tap into it or you could avoid it, but it, it is always there. Right. It, it, for anything, by the way. Um, here's an interesting one. Do you believe opposites attract or do they repel? I appreciate the brevity of the question. Uh, the hard part is that very few things are that simple or black and white. Yeah. I think a better way to state that is that you would, most people are best served by dating their, their complement, not their clone. Uh, yeah. So you may be attracted to most of my clients basically want to date themselves. I want a man who's just like me, who's, t but he's taller and smarter and richer and funnier and kinder and saner, but I want him to be just like me, but without my flaws and my neuroses. But then he's just and not so, just like you. <laughs> right. But I'm saying most people are attracted to what's familiar to them. Yes. So if you're, if you're a practicing Catholic, you look for Catholic. If you're a big skier, you look for a skier. The problem is those things have 0% to do with compatibility. Mm -hmm. And there's a study out of Northwestern that shows the same thing. Compatibility is not about similarity. So what does make compatibility work? How do the puzzle pieces fit? If you're type A, that means you need to be in control and make a lot of decisions. Being with another type A man who's going to conflict with you a lot, probably not a great idea. You need more of a yes, dear kind of person. Mm -hmm. You might say, but I'm not attracted to that person. Well, that describes why dating and relationships has been hard for you. So ultimately, chemistry gets you in the door. Compatibility is what keeps you there. And good relationships have a blend of chemistry and compatibility and masculine and feminine energy, which is how 
some couples look like really, really great couples because they get along because they know their roles and they play them really well. Oh, I love that. That's so good. This is an interesting question. I'm 42 and I seem to draw younger guys. Why? I need a man, not a brat. <laughs> well, she must be hot if she's drawing younger guys. Can I just say that? Right. Um, I have a theory. Yeah. You don't attract the wrong men. You accept the wrong men. Ah. I hear a lot from women about why do I attract the wrong men? Most men are the wrong men. You don't attract them. You're not a magnet. You either have a choice to repel them because you know they're not right for you, right? Or to let them in and try to figure out how to make something out of nothing. So if some 32 year old guy is trying to get some action with you because he still thinks you're hot and he thinks, oh, she's not going to be pressuring me about kids like my last 32 year old girlfriend. What a perfect relationship. It doesn't matter what he wants. It's whether he's aligned with what you want. Mm -hmm. So you don't attract anybody in particular because I'll have women say, why do I get guys in their seventies writing to me? What am I doing that's attracting these older men? It's a free country. Everybody's on this, these sites. Everybody has a chance to say hi to you, whether they're 20 or whether they're 70, you're right. never going to wean them out <laughs> of your process. So focus on the 10% of men that are aligned with your larger mission instead of worrying about why the wrong guy is right to you, because the wrong guys are always going to write to you. 90% of the men are the wrong men. Too young, too old, too hippie liberal, too MAGA. There's always going to be some guy who <laughs> writes to you who you don't like, and it's right. okay. Right. And, and maybe a certain type is drawn to you. Um, who knows? Um, oh, this is interesting. What advice does Evan have for the single man trying to date at this stage of life? I don't know. Is this your show? <laughs> I, I, uh, first five years of my business, I gave advice to men. I was just a generic dating coach. And I realized that 80% of my clients were women. Mm. Uh, women ask for more help. Men need more help. Ah. And so I, there's no point in running a business for people who are not asking for help. But if men were to yeah. ask for help, what would you tell them? I would probably tell them the reverse of what I tell women, mm. right? Where if, if one of the central messages of dating coaching is to stop putting guys on a pedestal because they're tall or rich or brilliant, mm -hmm. handsome, even though those are all attractive qualities, choose a guy based on how he treats you and how you feel with him. Yes. Kindness, consistency, communication, commitment, character. That's a better marker of whether you're going to be happy. Yeah. I'd tell the same thing to a guy. Stop venerating youth and beauty and thin mm -hmm. and pay attention. Does she make you feel accepted? Does she make you feel admired? Does she make you feel appreciated? Can you be yourself? Or are you going to be walking on eggshells apologizing for your whole life? And if you have a partner who gets you and appreciates you and isn't constantly criticizing you, hold on. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's I, I think it's pretty universal, universal li uh, life advice. We want to be with people who love us and accept us unconditionally. And it's really hard to find. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I love, say your C's again, there were five of them, right? Character, kindness, consistency, communication and commitment. Okay, well, a C's and a K. But that's all good. Yeah, I couldn't work that out. We could add the word connection if you want to use oh, well, that. Well, I like that. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. well, what are some tips uh, for meeting age-appropriate men, say 45 to 55 plus outside of dating apps? Uh, yeah. There's a woman named Patty Stanger who's best known as the millionaire matchmaker. And to tie this whole show together, I was once asked by a producer of the Dr. Phil show to debate her mm -hmm. on national television. I said, well, I don't know anything about her. Tell me something she said. Here was the quote. You want to meet a lawyer? Stand outside a courthouse. <laughs> it was the single dumbest dating advice I'd ever heard. The debate did not take place. So I say this just as a means of pointing out that you can stand outside a men's room. It says men right on the door. You know they're going to be walking in there. But I don't think that's really a dating practice in any way, shape, or form. Right. You can take, take up golf because guys play golf, but unless you like golf, I wouldn't turn that into a hobby. Yeah, and so most of them might be wearing wedding rings, so you're spinning your right. wheels. Go live your life. 
and say yes to social opportunity. Mm -hmm. Not with the intent of where am I going to find a man like he's hiding under some, some scrub brush. But if you get invited to a party, say yes. You get invited to a, a night out, some social networking event, say yes. Mm -hmm. Look up from your phone, smile, make eye contact. Mm -hmm. That's the way you meet people in real life. It's smiling and making eye contact wherever you are. Yep. It's not where do I go to find him. Yeah. And it's not rocket science, like you say, you know, it can, it can happen in the most organic way just by being alert. And, and it's so true. I mean, we're, we're just, we're, we're buried in our phones these days. It's amazing how far just a little eye to eye acknowledgement. Good morning. How are you? I mean, what a, what a little icebreaker that can be in such a simple setting. I mean, we could be can walking I by wonderful people with wonderful opportunities in our lives. If we just simply look up and acknowledge. Can I share a quick story? Please. I'm a huge advocate of online dating because I do believe most of my clients got married from online dating because real life doesn't present enough opportunity. I wrote a book about online dating. I've, I've, I have a signature program about online dating. I'm a huge advocate. I did not meet my wife online. Mm -hmm. right? And I think it's an important story to tell. I met my wife at a potluck dinner on a Saturday night thrown by someone who dated me and then dumped me. <laughs> and she said, let's, let's stay friends. Right. And I was like, all right, okay. sure. Come to my house. There's lots of really nice people. We'll stay friends. I went to that party basically to ignore her and show her that I was over her. Mm. So I stood by the mac and cheese and I started talking to a couple of 37 year old divorced brunettes. And then six hours passed. And at the end of the night, I had to ask for one of their number. That was my wife, okay. but I wasn't hitting on her. It wasn't a master plan. I didn't go out to meet someone. I just got the hell out of the house while I was licking the wounds from uh, the most recent breakup that I had. And I tell that story very specifically, not to say real life is so great. Real life is wonderful. But the point of the story is actually, my wife and I were on the same dating site at the same time, but we didn't see each other uh. because I wasn't looking for a woman who's three years older and she wasn't looking for a Jewish guy. So we were two ships passing in the night online because of our arbitrary criteria, Interesting. but we met in real life. So that just goes to show dating online, everybody's there. The people at the party and every other party in town, they're all online. The question is, are you seeing them? And if not, why not? I love that. I think that is the perfect way to button this up. That's an incredible story. And, and the moral of the story is just show up, just show up, take, take a risk, say yes to something because you just don't know. Worst case scenario, you could have time with friends. You could have rubbed it in her face that you're over her. Best case scenario, you met your wife. And I love that because you just decided to say yes. I think that's most of life, right? Just saying yeah. yes, taking opportunities when they cross your path instead of you know, blinding yourself, putting your head down, uh, spending too much time in that, in that victim place. Yep. Um, and so anything is possible. We're not asking for miracles. There are 80 million married couples or something in America. It's like an astounding number of people. People call, talk about the decline of marriage. It hasn't declined that much. Mm. And so especially for upper middle class college educated women, you are the best demographic, the most married demographic. Marriage is at a, at a low point for poor communities, but for people who are educated with money, there is absolutely a guy out there who will dig you and love you unconditionally, but you can't meet him if you keep on doing what you're doing. That's so true. I love it. I love it. And since this is our Valentine's Day episode, are you and your wife, do you guys do anything for Valentine's Day or, or are you like, nah, another day on the calendar? Uh, because I was raised by a mom who made a big deal about holidays, I'm pretty good. Always a card, always a gift, always a dinner out. It's hard to keep up creativity after 17 years, but there will be a card and a gift and a dinner, I promise. I love that. And, and just from the female perspective, does she do things for you? She does not. <laughs> uh, it... And how do you feel about that? I understand it for what it is. We have, we have a, a, you know, again, I don't, it's not intentional. We have a 1950s marriage, right? I am the breadwinner, protector, pr 
provider. Mm -hmm. She quit her career by her own volition after 16 years to stay home with the kids who are now 11 and 13. Yeah. So for her to try to go find me a gift with money, my own money, it doesn't matter that much. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no one's really keeping score. I, I don't worry about it. Like this is the job that I took on is to provide for everybody. Yeah. So I don't expect to get very much monetarily mm. from someone who hasn't had a job for 13 years. You know, makes so, total um, sense. And, and honestly, Evan, it's kind of biblical in nature when you think about it. Yeah, again, and, and that's that's not my wheelhouse. So uh, I, I most of my clients are working women who are looking for men who are also protector provider mm -hmm. types. I don't think that's the only way to have a marriage. My sister is part of a marriage where they're both, you know, working six figure earning couples. They live in North Carolina. They have an a nice life together. And she wouldn't want to spend full time with the kids because that would impact her sanity. And I can't judge her for that either. Right. So there's always different strokes for different folks. For our relationship, this works really well. And it means she's never picked up the check on a date. Like it's always been me. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful love story. And how it happened is the most important message for all of us on this Valentine's Day is just to find a way and and don't put limitations and boundaries and and don't have uh, expectations or you know I should do this I no shoulds no shouldn'ts just just let it roll just let it roll and and no agendas and no interviews sir yes sir <laughs> hey before we hop yeah. can I tell tell your uh, listeners where they can get a free gift absolutely. My name is Evan Mark Katz. I'm a dating coach, coach for smart, strong, successful women. I am so grateful for being able to talk to Dominique and by extension to be able to talk to you that I made you a free gift if you didn't get it the last time I was on the show. If you go to evanmarkkatz.com forward slash over 50, I am going to give you the seven massive mistakes you're making in dating. You probably don't even know that you're making them. So get that free 25 page special report. I'll send you free dating and relationship advice. And if you're serious about love, I would be honored to help you. The course is called Love You. Fill out an application and I'll talk to you then. Oh, thank you, Evan. That's so nice of you to offer that to my audience. I appreciate it. I wish you guys a wonderful Valentine's Day. Thank you as always for being on Over 50 and Flourishing. You are an engaging, insightful, and, and honestly downright fun guest. So thank you. I am honored to be uh, part of your production and I'm, I'm ready to come back if ever asked again. You are delightful. Oh, thanks. And you will be asked again. Love him to pieces. You know he's going to be back. And of course, I'll be asking more questions from you all because I really think it's great. I mean, I may have some questions, but I think it's important that yours are answered. So a repeat guest indeed. I thank you so much for following this podcast, for subscribing. If you do watch on YouTube, remember, it really, really helps to grow the show if you hit the subscribe button and also comment below. You know, this content is really driven by you and your interests. So give us a thumbs up if you liked seeing Evan, if you want to see more of Evan, that would be amazing. Um, also some content ideas that you have for us, we'll take a look in the comment section below. And if you listen to us on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, I always say it's RRSS, rate, review, subscribe, share rate, review, subscribe, share. Again, it's it's just a way to grow this platform. Share me with your girlfriend, with your sister, with a new friend that you just made at work. You know, maybe you guys are talking about relationships. You're talking about menopause or you're talking about being in that sandwich generation. And this is the kind of content that I'm curating for you. And I would just be love more than anything to be able to loop in more women in the conversation. So if you do that for me, it would be wonderful. So glad you were here and I will see you next week on Over 50 and Flourishing. Hey everybody, did you know about Bond Charge? It's a holistic wellness brand and they've got a huge range of products. You may be familiar with those red light face masks. I know you've seen a lot of content creators use them and talk about them. They've gained popularity because they treat a wide range of symptoms. Things like wrinkles and fine lines, eczema, even migraines, 
acne, scar tissue. There's wound healing, relaxation, even razor burns and ingrown facial hair. That's a lot. Red light therapy has been reviewed in more than 4,000 peer-reviewed studies, with 400 plus being double-blind placebo trials. Not only do these studies show amazing health benefits, but nobody has any negative side effects. I particularly like the red light face mask naturally for fine lines and wrinkles because, yeah, I am 56, so that's why I use it. Just 10 to 20 minutes each day. Nice and easy to use. You can do it while you're watching your favorite television show, whatever. It's lightweight. It doesn't get hot. Again, Bond Charge, B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E. Here, get this. Go to bondcharge.com slash over 50. Use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. 